Yeah, here's that uh, Black Christmas. In the, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it's in really good condition, too. Look at that. $119. Wow. I tell you guys, those horror VHSs, man, they get up there. In price. Look at that. $450. That's insane. And look at that. That's it. There's only a few of them. Uh, guys, did you watch Chris Stuckman's review of Black Christmas 2006? Now, finally, everybody will be like, oh, yeah, I'll, okay, I guess it's good now. Yeah, and I'm not knocking Chris Stuckman. Gee, thank God that he actually threw a bone to uh, one of the obscure horror movies because a lot of us, you know, in the horror, we've been like, we've been like freaking Stallone behind uh, Bruce Willis and Die Hard saying, hey, guys, we got some good movies over here. You know, maybe maybe throw them a bone every now and then instead of talking about The Exorcist for the 13,000th time. Um, I sound like I'm in a mood, don't I? But yeah, it's just like, there's so many deep cut movies that need attention. You know, I literally have a playlist on my channel. Nothing but deep cuts. I call it deep cuts and you can go in there. But no, no none of the quote unquote bigger channels, they, talk, they don't talk, it seems like they don't talk about Black Christmas 2006, you know? We can thank the heavens that Black Christmas 2019 came out. We can thank the heavens that Black Christmas 2019 came out because what did it do? It caused people to take a second look at Black Christmas 2006. Because, because I guarantee you people wouldn't be talking. I mean, every horror channel, they're going to, you know, every Christmas they got to go through. And that's one of the bigger Christmas movies, of course. But, you know, nine horror channels, they usually don't talk about it. But, yeah, 2019, it raised awareness for 2006. And everybody's like, wait, this movie doesn't look that bad now. And then when they really, really watched it and paid attention and maybe set aside the crazy, whacked-out nature of the movie, and they realized, wait, this is actually a pretty damn good Christmas movie. The, the Christmas um, the, the Christmas atmosphere, like Holly was just saying in there, was amazing. Um, uh, it, it, the, uh, I swear, the, the, the direction by Glenn Morgan, the, the camera angles, all that, just spot on. The kills are insane. I still think the movie's way ahead of its time. Way ahead of its time. Okay? So, yeah. Glad that Black Christmas 2006 is uh, starting to get some love. Guys, um, have you watched uh, the original Black Christmas this month yet? I mean, that's one movie I have to watch every December. Um, it's just so good. It's that important to me. And um, one thing I love about uh, even the original Black Christmas is that it was forgotten for a long, long time. And then um, I think the internet is what saved that movie. You know, because before the internet, I never heard anything about Black Christmas 74. You know? And then along comes the internet. Maybe a little help from that uh, 25 Years of Terror documentary, Halloween. Because right at the beginning of that documentary, they talk about all these movies that kind of paved the way for Halloween. And they're going down, you know, like Peeping Tom. Um twitch of the death nerve um a few others and then they mention black christmas you know they skip right over black you know they say it and then they move on and as i'm watching it you know i move back i'm like oh whoa, 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 whoa. hold on go back go back what was that what was that and they showed a, like a picture uh you know a scene from the movie of um olivia, uh, olivia hussey i was like what is it what is this movie why have i never heard of this movie and then uh I started looking it up and I, I saw that there was um, a DVD that came out for the movie and I, I and I was like, not only is this movie good, but this is probably one of the best horror movies I've ever seen in my entire life. This isn't just a little movie that had, you know, one little fact, maybe be it the, the holiday aspect to it, but otherwise not the not the greatest. No. This movie was phenomenal like from every like as far as like setting up your scares no jump scares whatsoever uh just a really creepy 70s vibe but it still felt like there was some money in the script you know or maybe just a lot of creativity because everything just worked about that movie and still to this day when you compare it to other horror movies it stands on its own it has a certain um vibe to it that is kind of unmatched you know um so yeah 
I watched it again last night. I was um, I was messing with my settings on my my TV, my HD TV, and um, I noticed that I didn't have my HDR set. I'm about to lose a lot of you here, but um, I didn't have my HDR setting. Um, I guess to the right setting because it didn't look inky black and that's what and i was like black christmas you want that movie you want the the uh the 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 see the cinematography to look nice and inky black and so i changed that and boom it just popped it looked amazing the movie looks amazing. and i just watched the blu-ray i haven't even gotten the 4k yet because i have the um i got the critical mass blu-ray and i got the uh, the shout factory blu-ray and um it, it, you know, depending on what you're looking for, I think both cuts are great. You know, there's, uh, but there's differences between both cuts. And I think if you want the dirtier, more grindhouse um, presentation, then you go with the critical mass. But if you want, I guess, the more slick version, then you go with the uh, the South Factory. And there's no wrong answer. They both look fantastic. Yeah, here's that uh, Black Christmas. Isn't it, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it's in really good condition too. It's probably you could probably get that on um, eBay. I would think. I don't know. I wonder how much it is on eBay. Look at that, hundred and nineteen dollars. Wow! I tell you guys, those horror VHSs, man, they get up there in price. Look at that, four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and I'll show you what the. Uh, oh look, it's the Warner Brothers logo, because Warner Brothers. Um, see, Black Christmas came out in um Canada. It came out in Canada and it was a big hit in Canada when it first came out, but then they uh distributed it in um the states under Warner Brothers, but they changed the name to Silent Night Evil Night and then they changed it to like something else that had like nothing to do with Christmas. It was just horrible. And so I it just goes to show how important a title is. Like it already had a great title, Black Christmas for some reason Warner Brothers um they they didn't get it and they just decided to give it a different name like silent night evil night uh which is not a bad name and this is before silent night deadly night so but yeah it just didn't catch on and it kind of just went out with a whimper in the states and then um and then you know like i said back when the uh, internet age picked up that's when um it started you know picking up steam um quentin tarantino is a massive fan of black christmas and he uh, actually had his own private I think he still does has his own private reel of the movie you know and this was like back in the like the 90s he used to watch the movie before it was like really big um, a little factoid I found out today from watching the documentary by the way guys you can watch the documentaries on the blu-ray um, uh, great interviews with all the cast the filmmakers but Olivia Olivia Olivia, Olivia Hussey stated that Elvis Presley used to watch Black Christmas every year, you know, so that would be like a couple years, I guess, before he passed away. But Elvis Presley and the entire Elvis Presley estate, they were all big fans of Black Christmas. Go figure, right? It makes me wonder, like, I would love to know, like, if Elvis was into horror movies or did he just like the aesthetic of that movie? I don't know. I mean, if you like Black Christmas, then maybe you like horror movies too, right? I would think so. So I would love to find out what other horror movies Elvis liked. I picked up the um, the soundtrack uh, at Spooky Empire a couple years ago when I went to Spooky Empire. That's guys. That's one thing. Like guys, do you go to horror conventions? And like, what's your favorite? And I know this might sound kind of like the obvious, but what's your favorite thing about horror conventions? All right, because I I found this out after going to my first horror convention, and I quickly found out the thing I love the most, I think, is the merch room, because. You're going to find stuff that you will... Uh, thank you, Destiny. Yeah, the shopping. You're going to find stuff that you will never find outside of that convention. Unless you go online, and you'll probably pay more for it. But, yeah, you go through the merch, and you're going to find items that you probably would never see again. You know, it's so freaking cool. And uh, I, I, I found this one place. They were selling, like, Blu-rays, you know, and, and a lot of, like, Italian horror and deep cuts. And they had a, um, a vinyl section. And I started flipping through there, and sure enough, I saw Black Christmas. It's a great, it's a great soundtrack. It's a, it's one of the most unique soundtracks too, as far as composition goes, because it feels very organic. It feels like a mixture, of like like I was watching the documentary, and uh, the guy that did the uh, the score, he was talking about how 
uh, how tough it was to actually put together those sounds. Even like Billy's voice, you know, when he's talking on the phone, he had to go into the mixing room and, you know, uh, combine a lot of things, adjust the levels, all kinds of, and he says it wasn't as easy as you think it was. Same thing with the score, you know, they're, they're taking like um, organ, uh, like uh, organ strings and they're raking it with like freaking forks and all kinds of crazy stuff to make those sounds, but it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Black, I wanted to spend the, the first 30 minutes of this stream just praising, praising Black Christmas. Uh, and every year I watch it, guys, I fall in love with it more and more and more. And it is such a phenomenal film. And um, I I would tell you, like, what's the guys, what is the best way to watch Black Christmas? What is the best way to watch Black Christmas? I'm going to tell you my favorite way. Hold on. The best way to watch Black Christmas is on um, technically Christmas morning. I always say late Christmas Eve, but Christmas morning at 3 a.m. Christmas morning at 3 a.m. And I found this out by accident. Because you know how a lot of us, for some reason or another, it's just hard to sleep on Christmas Christmas Eve or Christmas night. You know, it's something that started when I was a kid because I was too excited about presents in the, the next morning and I just couldn't sleep. You know, I would try to sleep and I'd wake up like every hour and then I'd look at the clock and it would say like two. And I still have that problem to this day. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if it's just the excitement of, you know, my own kids opening their presents or, you know, or even opening my own presents. But 3 a.m. Some need. I'll tell you why 3 a.m. 3 a.m. is the witching hour, okay? And there's just something extra creepy about watching it at 3 a.m. And I, a couple years ago, like five years ago, I woke up at 3 a.m. And I was like, you know what? I can't sleep. I'm going to go in the living room and I'm going to watch something. And I threw in Black Christmas. And that was the best viewing experience I have ever had. It was just so freaking cool. I was wide awake, you know. And I just really enjoyed it. And then when the movie was over, it was like five o'clock in the morning and it was almost time to open presents. So it was kind of cool, you know, especially for like a, a horror fan like myself. Like I love horror that much, you know, I love horror year round, not just in October, um, even on Christmas. I love horror that much. And it just kind of, you know, it was like my own little horror version of Christmas, I guess, you know, just something for me. Okay. Because my wife, she's never even watched Black Christmas. She's not, you know, she likes the, the, like, modern thrillers and stuff like that. But she definitely doesn't like, like, those deep cuts. She doesn't like 80s horror. Uh, you know, most people, I can't fault her. Most people aren't like that. But we, we are like that. Right, guys? And we love that old stuff. And, and yeah, it's just, it's something for us, you know? It, which is kind of nice. Makes it a little bit more special, if you ask me. 